So what got you onto the idea of graphene? Uh, graphene is just one of many ideas which we have in the, in, in the lab and we try to spread our research and diversify our research as, as, as much as possible. It's just one of the uh, ideas which you heard about. There are plenty of those which you probably haven't heard. There are a few of those which are more fruitful than, than graphene, which you never heard. So it's just one of the many ideas. So another one before graphene about at the same time was um, Gekate, which, which flew quite nicely and spread and it's probably more economically valuable than graphene. There are a few which, uh, which never worked out, but uh, I'm still thinking about coming back to those. So, graphene was only one of those a few, and we just thought, why not try to make a transistor out of a metal? And then the, the immediate uh, idea is uh, which metal to take. It's, it's graphite, and then we, then we started to, to work with it. And we were quite lucky that uh, the very first samples worked, and because usually we, we allow ourselves just a few a few days, probably a week, on, on, on such projects, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, which you, you forget about it. Okay. Um, graphene Research is now a worldwide project. Um, where is Europe's role in this, and is Europe the world leader, in your opinion, in graphene research? Um, so, at the moment, it's, quite, it's practically impossible to to, to be a leader in graphene research because uh, there are so many aspects of, the, of this research which you can touch. Graphene it's like a, it's like a philosopher's stone. Just any property you you touch, it's uh, it's either unique or it's better than that in in other materials. So it's the it's of course the electronic properties which attract a lot of people, but then there are Mechanical properties is the thinnest possible material, is the most, um, is the strongest material, is the most stretchable, but the, um, the same, the, more, the, the stiffest one. And there are chemical properties, and there are optical properties, and there are a lot of a lot of interesting interesting properties of of, of graphene. And um, because of its diversity, um, so many so many different groups work in this area, and I don't think any single group can 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 cover all of those all of those d directions. So we uh, we interact with, with, with between each other, do some some cross co co collaboration pro uh, projects, but I don't think any single group has a, has a dominance in the field. But then there are of course quite a few leaders, like for example Columbia University is is doing extremely active research. People in Singapore and 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 in in Korea, they are specify they they are quite good in, in in applications. There is Cambridge as well, who are um, uh, uh, who are leaning more towards optics and and applications there. So there are a few centers, but in fact the research is quite is quite spread, and that's uh, that's exactly because there are so many aspects, different aspects of of, of this material. Which, which can be started. Okay. Um, why is graphene exciting and what would you see as being the first major applications of graphene? Well, I mean, it's exciting because of its uniqueness. Okay. So there are several reasons why it is exciting. For first, it's so easy to obtain and then immediately you get so many different properties, uh, so many different experiments uh, which you can do with it. So, there are this low cost really attract people, and then a lot of a lot of labs across the, the world uh, love to do experiments with it. And but then uh, it's really it's the, the the combination I guess of the of those properties or the unique properties which is exciting, and then every single researcher would have, would have its its own top list uh, of. Of the properties, why he is uh, he is in this area. Um, in terms of applications, I can I can speculate, but uh, as they say, I can I, I, I cannot predict the future. I can only accurately predict the, the past. So I, I certainly hope that there will be applications. 
and you can see that probably the first ones will be coming from transparent conductive coating it's uh, liquid crystal displays, solar cells, touch screens, tactile screens uh, and so on but it's, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's still it's still far fetching, it's still another year probably we will have to wait but what is encouraging that already now we have some applications which are there already there are small companies I can give you one you can, um, people in, who work in, bio, in, in, in biology in, in life science they love to use graphene as a transparent conductive coating for, for, uh, for, the, uh, for studying objects in TM because it's mechanically strong, it's, it's, it's transparent, it's conductive, it's an ideal substrate on which to, to put the, um, the objects like DNA for instance and there is a company, there are actually several companies which sell graphene on TM for these purposes so it's not selling graphene for the purpose of science, it's they sell no graphene as a, as a device already so uh, those companies already exist Okay. Um, how has getting the Nobel Prize changed your life? How does it feel to receive a Nobel Prize? And were you nervous in Stockholm? Right. Um, so uh, it changed in a way that I had to fight really hard uh, over over a few months uh, to not to change it at all. So now it's it's pretty much back to normal, and that's that's exactly the 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 state uh, I was targeting. And uh, I think I achieved it pretty much well, and so there are only some minor disruptions. Um, um, surely it was it was quite a shock for for a few days, and it's, uh, it's, a, it, it's a pleasant shock, but it, it's a shock. Um, in Stockholm, I mean, what, why should you be nervous? You just uh, no, I, I wasn't. So if I wasn't. I was nervous and I was excited when we when we were doing experiments and so in Stockholm. Okay, that's, it's nice, but uh, I wasn't nervous. Yeah. Um, Cost brings scientists together across different countries and continents. Um, you've moved a lot during your scientific career. Do you think mobility for researchers is important? Absolutely. That's uh, it is important and it is it is necessary. It broadens your horizon. And it it allows you to to learn different techniques, and it is the saddest thing to see when scientists learn, uh, just concentrate only on their own field without um, moving from from one point to, to another. Um, actually, myself, I feel that I I've been staying in, in graphene area for far too long, so that's why about a year ago I started the process of moving away from. From Manchester, just to escape from 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 graphene, it's a bit of a problem now. But that's that's what I was trying to do. A year ago, I filed a resignation letter to our university. So, and it's, uh, I, I certainly love to see more mobility, both in Europe and uh, between other countries. Cost plays a role in supporting what we call early stage researchers by providing them with opportunities to embark on scientific missions between laboratories. Uh, we also have training schools and we allow them to work in close collaboration with senior scientists. What would your advice be to young people at school who would like to work in, for example, a field such as nanotechnology? Um, I don't think you can... Um, you can start specializing in technology as early as, uh, as school. The school is there to, to give you as broad education as possible and you have to take it. I would, I would certainly disagree with people who say that we need to start pushing our kids to, to learn some specific subject as, as early as possible. It is uh, other way around. I think you need to broaden your horizon and try to to study everything in school. That's your last chance to to, to study everything. You, you go to the university and and, and that's it. You're you chosen your your path, and then if you chosen it incorrectly, you basically you are done. So that's uh, I don't think you need to. You should give a, an opportunity for for kids to learn about technology, but you shouldn't certainly give it. 
any priority you know, uh, in comparison of other subjects. I mean, sure, they should they should be able to to, to learn this as well. And what was the first part of the question? Um, yeah, what would your advice be to be no, to young people? So that's about we, I think we we done that. There was something else. I don't know. What would your advice be to young people at school who would like to work in the field of nanotechnology? Okay, that's, that's yeah. one. Way. Super, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for Okay. Pleasure.